A very warm welcome to So This is Thailand. I'm Valerie McKenzie, Sawadee Ka. I'm Johan Wimon Chalau, Sawadee Ka. And I'm Tapani Manawe, Sawadee Ka. We know that there are many, many fruits here in Thailand, and one of those fruits is called the Queen of Fruits, which is the mangosteen. So it's particularly interesting, I think, to read that the mangosteen is able to be used as an antioxidant. Mm. It's surprising that 35 years ago, a group of people, researchers, found that it had some very good features for helping the immune system of the body. It's taken a long, long time, but now it looks as though it's going to help in those people that have cancer. So a lot of work still to be done, but if you want to be fit and healthy, try Thai food, but the actual mangosteen is a must. So I you, hope you like it. You, well, you can actually buy mangosteen juice now, and it's right up there with acai berries and uh, with those go, goji, goji berries as mm. well, in terms of the, the beneficial nutrients and, as you mentioned, antioxidants. So it's, it's a great, like one of those miracle foods. And as the queen of fruits, I believe it's also gets paired up with durian, yes? Really? Oh, the king of fruits. The king of fruits, is, that's is right. Durian. You're supposed to eat them together. Oh, I thought the queen of fruits from the mangosteen came from the, um, the tops, that they look like they have little crowns on their um, that on could the be fruit. It too. <laughs> I don't but think anyway. actually this is what was in mind, because I think if you have the durian, <laughs> this is going to cause an enormous problem for your intestines and internally. No, no, I the think, durian huh? is the king of fruits because of the, spiky, uh, the spikiness. It's like a crown. Exactly. It has but like a hundred I'm crowns. trying to help you with your immune system, <laughs> and I don't know that the durian does that. So uh, please. Go to the website and read all about mangosteens because they're very, very good for you. And uh, the juices are good, but the fresh ones are even better. You remember there was actually uh, a whole lot of this mangosteen fruit that was an oversupply last year and they actually dumped it on the market. Well, people did make the juices from that and jams and a lot, a lot more. So uh, just try it. I'm sure you'll like it. Yeah, mangosteen jam is very, very nice. Mm, just be okay. careful when you're cutting them because they can really stain a lot. Mm. Very true. In other words, don't use your teeth. Don't use your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> so, too. the talk of the town, Johan? Well, talk of the town is yet another call center scam. It seems that they love coming here to Thailand from all points around the world. I recall sometime earlier this year, there was one involving some European, Europeans, excuse me, doing a call center. Now, 22 Taiwanese sentenced to three years in jail for doing a call center scam but it was actually halved because they confessed so they got 50 percent off for i guess being honest in the end only a year and a half for those uh, but you know to look at 22 of them they had actually rented uh spaces in a siri housing estate in la prao and also in Mung tong three housing estate in Nontoburi. so it's quite a, a large network that gets done here mm. i mean that's not the only scams obviously but i guess if you work here you must have a work permit you must have a legal reason to be working. So mm. you need to concentrate on that first. You know, in fact, whether it's legal or it's illegal. So it's a matter of actually understanding what the law is. And uh, if there's any doubt, check it or don't do it. And, and I guess the, the, mm. the most common types of scam they love doing, they call them come on scams, where they call you up to say, oh, there might be some problem somewhere. You need to check your bank account or you need to transfer money to this bank account. And people don't realize when they do it, it's not going to that you know, fictitious organization. It's actually going into one of the gang members' accounts. So just need to be careful. Hmm. Be All aware. Right. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about something a little bit uh, more cheerful this time, and uh, it's about pufferfish. Now, uh, pufferfish are caught along the coast of Thailand every day, and uh, they mostly pose a nuisance for the fishermen because they are poisonous, for one thing, and uh, the meat can't really be eaten, although they're is a, a bit of a scam with the puffer fish meat as well. But that's another story. Now, the story today is about uh, a fishing town in Bangsapan, Rajob Kirikan province, where they have turned the local economy towards uh, this puffer fish lambs, which are selling very well. They're in great demand among customers and tourists, and uh, they're quite cute, actually. So um, what they do is they remove the internal organs of the fish, clean it, and then they sew it back up, put a balloon in there, and um, um, and then kind of expand the fish, I guess. Uh, now they dry it out, and after that, it gets ready to be turned into a lamp. This is a, one of the best sellers amongst tourists, so I've heard. And uh, it's been going around for a while. <laughs> the photograph we just showed you on the screen, it looks as though you just need one for your Halloween party. <laughs> it's, it's smiling, it's but it's got cute. all those spines on it. <laughs> When well, you better put it up, than you ending need to up on very, a plate. Very careful, I guess. Mm -hmm. You get the best stories, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, moving right along, looking at the AEC coming up and especially our competitiveness with our neighboring countries, Vietnam is always a force to be contended with. Um, and Vietnam, in historically looking at it, in the past, also very strong in agriculture, just like Thailand, but also in fields of tourism, manufacturing of electronics and textiles as well. Now, what we're trying to look at, though, is not too much compete with them, but look at it as an opportunity for investment and for ties to be able to really gain in this openness that's coming up. You know, Vietnam, Vietnam like Thailand, long, long history, a lot of uh, influence out there. It was actually the first Southeast Asian country to have a university, so a lot of the population already very fluent in, in English as well. Mm. Um, and French. And French as well. And Russian. And Russian. Mm. Um, okay. And Chinese. So they are a really a, a multicultural country. 91 million people, the second largest population in ASEAN, so it's a very large base there, you know, if you're looking around. Um, very similar to what Japan was in the past. Mm. So, you know, it is going to be something that you have to look out for in the future very competitive, a, lo a very strong worker base who are educated. The other thing is I think they've got a very strong work ethic and I that's, think it's probably due to their uh, being run as a socialist government. I mean, we have two, very rarely three, uh, fields of rice per year. I mean, they actually go and have four or five and we always say here that the soil can't take that volume of rice being grown each time. But clearly the Vietnamese are able to do it and uh, as you know they're nudging us along to take over the top position as the leading exporter of rice globally. And it won't be long before I think Myanmar follows. So uh, we've just got to be a little bit, uh, it's good to have competition but we need to be a little bit smarter in what we do. And if, if you also are aware, there was a statistic a while back where they were comparing how many books people in Asia read and Thailand was unfortunately at the lower end of the scale, one or two books a year, while Vietnam was very much high. They were looking at six or seven books a year, so very well driven. And in fact, there's actually a large Vietnamese contingent here in Thailand as well. They've settled in Nakhon Phanom, Sakhon Nakhon, and Jantanaburi provinces as well. Even Ho Chi Minh City in the, in the past lived and stayed here in Thailand. Ho Chi Minh himself, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Had a house here and learned Thai. So a very long and close history between Thailand and Vietnam. Mm, so, uh, as I said, good to have competitors, but we need to actually be aware of what they're doing and get out there. But for those of you expats watching the program who think there may be a good opportunity, the Vietnamese embassy here is always very helpful, apart from the internet that you can access. And uh, maybe you can expand your business even further uh, beyond Thailand into the ASEAN communities. All right. Well, next up is uh, about the automotive industry in Thailand. Good news coming along that front. As uh, more European automakers are set to move their production base to Thailand. Uh, this is according to the chairman of the Federation of Thai Industries, or FTI. Now, Thailand has had uh, a strong history of uh, auto parts production and assembly and a we have like very up-to-date production technologies which is attracting more investors. The establishment of the AEC as well will help to integrate the markets um, and European automakers are have expressed an interest in building a truck production base uh, and uh, this is a very lucrative market. Um, so, so far this year uh, we have a record of producing 2.3 million units which has exceeded the projected 2.2 million and uh, bearing in mind we're only up to the uh, seventh month of the year and the uh, total production has risen from the same period last year. So. That's of course given great opportunity to the accessories market to actually grow here and for those of you who don't know, let us remind you again that Thailand is known as the Detroit of the East. Every, any motor vehicle company that is anybody is here and uh, manufacturing. So uh, there's the assembly lines, but you know, there's also, if we look at Auto Alliance, for example, they actually make the Ford and the Mazda all here, all exported, or well, a very large export market to the rest of the world. So uh, good to see some extra vehicles coming into the country. Well, actually, on, on a side note, looking at the, the cars, we, we actually export so many cars, a lot of people here in the country have to get in a queue to get theirs. So oh, I know that some true. of our friends are like, how can we produce our cars here, but we have to, mm. we have to wait so many months to get them? That's because mm. we're shipping them all overseas. Mm. Well, the same happens with fruit as well, when there was a shortage of pineapple, <laughs> and they were all going in cans and going overseas. And we had to wait. Yes. For the next season. Yes. <laughs> well, to round out the news today, 
there's so many companies out there talking big about, we're going green, we're going to be environmentally friendly, we're going to cut down on costs. Well, there is one company which is actually putting those words into action, and that is Impact Muang Tong Tani. They have actually cut 13 million baht off their electricity bill just in the first half of the year. How have they done that? Well, they've, they've gone through, they looked at all their, their equipment, they've redone the, the, the chillers because those are really, it's the air conditioning which is really the, the mm. big consumer of the electricity. They've redone the scheduling of that, put in energy efficient light bulbs everywhere, a whole slew of, of, of measures and making sure that people's behavior especially have changed so they're more energy conscious. So when they leave the room, they shut off the light. No, I think that's great. I mean, the other thing that they're doing out there, which I think is also very good, is they've got so many CCTV cameras to make sure that, you know, people feel safe and they can actually protect all of the volume. I think it's over 16 million visitors they get a year. So uh, to save that sort of money on electricity, can you imagine what their electricity bill is really? <laughs> and have the CCTV cameras? It's something very special. More than mine. More than yours. More, more than yours. <laughs> more than mine. <laughs> We're going to go to the break, and then when we come back, you may recall we interviewed a gentleman called Anders Norman, a gentleman from Denmark, and we found out that uh, he was actually quite an expert in the collection of antiques. Everyone worries about buying antiques. Are they going to be fake? Are they real? He doesn't necessarily tell us who is fake and what is real, but he does tell us or give us some tips on what to look for. So after the break, coming up, Anders Norman, if you're into antiques, this is the interview you should watch.